guys, it's Cecilia aka from Real Still and with 90 Days to Do and the MLS Bitcoin Club. Coming to you this beautiful Sunday. Oh my god, it is gorgeous out here. 82 degrees and I am loving the heat. You know, I don't like being cold, so the um, heat for me is awesome. So I'm on my way to go get my car washed. It's my second favorite place in the world, you know, make sure my car is clean. Um, I like getting my car washed. I like taking care of my vehicle. And, you know, just riding around. I'm going to go see my great nephew. I'm excited about that. And, you know, he's like three weeks old now. Something like that, yeah. Two or three weeks old. And, um, yeah, I'm just out for the day. I'm going to ride around, enjoy this beautiful weather, go visit loved ones, um, take in the sights and stuff. And, Think about ways to um, capitalize on my current cash flow, and I'm just growing. I'm excited about every day. Looking around me at properties and stuff, and I'm driving past, checking out what's in the area, what looks like is available, what looks like it might be empty or vacant. Also, looking at progress of properties that I missed the opportunity on, and seeing what's going on with them. Do you know I find it weird that there was a property up the block from me, right? That was supposedly put on the market, was on the market for 42 days, which it was never, because I was watching every day. Um, somebody pocketed it, but anyway. It sold, apparently. I saw a dumpster out there a couple of days, and then I don't see any more activity. And it's, it's been around a good two months, and this is the prime time where if they were going to be doing something with that property, they, they should have been in there every day just doing work, getting that place done. Now, for us, in the in the Fortune Builder Mastery Program, what we try to do it from the outside in. So we will be already handling the outside of the house, making it up more appealing to those in the neighborhood to contact, to um, get people's attention to the property and say, hey, wow, this is really looking good. I hope they hurry up and finish. I want to say, I can't wait to see what they're going to do with the inside because that will attract your sale. You know, that will get your neighbors excited and they'll say wow this looks like it's going to be a really good property i know somebody personally who's been looking for a place and what an ideal location is right up the street from me or whatever and that's what you do you bring the curb appeal and then you work on the inside and all the details and stuff however i don't see any activity as a matter of fact i see degression and i'm just worried like what happened? I, I'm trying to figure it out. Like, did they not find contractors? Were they out of funding? Were they unable to obtain a permit to start work? Did they find a, a big issue with the property that's not holding up everything? You know, all of those questions are in my mind. And I really wish I, I could um, see. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go on the land liens and stuff. And I'm going to look in the court's land records and see who purchased that property. See what it is now. And just see if I can find out from them like what's why nothing is happening with the property. You know, I'm curious. And as an investor and as somebody who looks forward to doing um, rehabs and stuff, if it's something that they came across in this township, like a hold up with permits or whatever, or whatever it might be, something that might affect my business down the line, I, w I would love to be aware of that and see what's going on. So. You know, that's just my take on it and I'm looking at um, other stuff again sharing my ideas with my partner man not my not my business partner but my personal life mate um, he he can be so pessimistic like everything is oh it's not gonna work or, oh it's not gonna this or not that love, love. man I can't I just can't you got to go through something to get something. You got to start somewhere to be somewhere. You can't just say, oh, people are going to tear up stuff or people are going to do this or do that. No. You got to have some kind of faith and have a business mind. We already know there's people out here don't care about people's property and will destroy stuff and things. You can't relate the type of people that you're dealing with to the type of clientele that I plan on having. And that's my own personal opinion. And I'm sorry. Yeah, I understand there are people out here who will rent properties and destroy them and have 
parties and do all of this and all that. There's also people who are just looking for a place to stay temporarily while they want to travel and go visit people or spend time outside and sightsee and just want to sleep or have a respectable, beautiful place that they can feel at home while they're away from home and not destroy. So I, I beg to differ and I feel like this. I'll find out. That's all I can say is I'll find out. You want to say, okay, it's good. You will never be a landlord because you'll have people that have parties every day in their lives at their home. So why would I rent to somebody who's going to do that, abuse the property and tear it up and then I have to fix it all up again at the end when I can have short-term people with less wear and tear, um, less likely that they'll damage stuff because there's implications to that. And that's why we have insurances and that's why we make them pay fees and stuff to rent it. Yes, I understand they'll have a person of good standing to rent a property, but that person is not going to do that for them repeatedly if they're running around tearing stuff up and it gets back to the person who rented it. So, and then they'll be blacklisted from running, you know, so whatever. I, I just can't. You guys have a great day. Enjoy your Sunday. I know I am. Bye-bye.